All right, hello and welcome to Late Night Dino, the place to be for 100% live Magic the Gathering Dino content. This list is a little similar to last night with some pretty key changes, so I'll just go over that quickly before we jump into the match. Nothing too crazy. Uh, some, some interesting, interesting changes to say the least. Hopefully everyone's doing well tonight, but... The namesake, Fly Guys. This is what's causing me to go into Naya colors. Red, green, and white here. Kinjali Sunwing. This dinosaur, I haven't used a whole lot in the past. Uh, came out in Ixalan, so certainly been there for quite some time. Uh, some of you guys may have tested this thing out a little bit, uh, but I like this potential. Last night I did use Urabrask the Hidden. Creatures you control have haste, but creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped i really like that potential of slowing down various aggressive decks is it phoenix specifically the arc light phoenixes when they come from the graveyard into the battlefield they're tapped that really is hopefully going to hurt the aggression of that deck and others would be nice but Kinjali sunwing costing two and a white for a two three that means it's going to survive at least one ping from a rotting raptor and only needing a single white it can benefit from some pretty intense cost reduction hopefully having one hunt master and one marauding raptor to reduce it to only a single white that'd be fantastic but also just having flying two power it would be able to trade with an arc light phoenix if they really want to do that but yeah i'm looking forward to this Starting off with Kinjali Sunwing, and it should hopefully slow down other aggressive decks. But really, Is it Phoenix, which I did just face an Is it Phoenix right before I started this stream, maybe 10 minutes ago. I lost, unfortunately, the Sprite Dragon and the other one, the 3 3 Prowess Bird. I forget what it's called, but yeah, it was rough, rough stuff. So, Death Gorge, starting off with this guy for Graveyard Hate against, is it Phoenix, Rakdos, things like that. Going to be a lot of stuff for this guy to eat, even again against uh, Zorius Control, Sweepers, various other spells. Yeah, he should be fed quite nicely against um, lots of decks. And continuing with last night, I do like the theme of adding more potential haste just to keep up the aggression so it was suggested and i have wanted to use samut tyrant smasher at some point now felt like a good time and thinking about this card over today it really does seem like it's gonna do the trick two and uh, it could be two green two red so it's nice having a flexible mana cost like that creatures you control have haste pretty basic but the potential of buffing something plus two plus one until end of turn and they gain haste which is redundant but that little line in there you may think oh why would they want to gain haste but say you want to remove the last loyalty counter from samet and her ability didn't give haste then uh, that would kind of suck so they have to have that on there on the off chance that the minus one is the last counter that Samet has. So the creature you target with that ability still at the very least has haste. Scry one, that's pretty fantastic. Getting closer to something more needed, maybe another creature. So I think the buff, the haste, Scry, it's lovely stuff. Maybe could even see myself increasing to more than a single copy, but more haste, more haste, that's where it's at. Again, Alana and Elena still in here. Hopefully, I get to see these guys a little bit more often. Again, I do love the potential of just snowballing, adding those plus one, plus one counters each combat. It's going to be fantastic if we can get that going off. Starting off again tonight, Shifting Ceratops and Ripjaw Raptor. Now, there is no Drover of the Mighty. That's a little, uh, a little iffy. I do like having the full suite of three Amigos. For Marauding Raptor, for Otepic Hunt Master, and for Drover of the Mighty, but there's a lot of other goodies to jam in, so I felt like cutting Drover of the Mighty, I think about 
10, 10 or 12 two drops really to make sure the early game keeps on moving and you can more easily cast some of the costlier dinos. That's potentially the more right way to go, but for tonight, just for marauding, for hunt master in the past that has done the trick for me quite nicely so um uh, hopefully it continues that trend regis or alpha four of as always it's been that way for well years now i think two three four years yeah galta i miss the queen whenever the queen is not in here that's very sad so at least two i was thinking three I did try four there for quite some time, and it does the trick, but um, yeah, at least two. I don't think I would probably ever go to one just because she's so amazing. She just shuts down games, wins on the spot sometimes, or maybe a turn later. Certainly she decides games, that's for sure. Lair of the Hydra, I remembered it. Blue Bear, yes couple basics just in case they got field of ruin that sort of thing the red uh pretty heavy into the red just because there's still anger of the gods in the sideboard requiring two red but for Kanjali sunwing being a dinosaur it is pretty fantastic it does need white but because it's a dinosaur definitely going pretty hard with secluded courtyard and unclaimed territory to really consistently help cast this thing also, a little bit of white, just in case um, it's getting a little rough, but at the moment, nine ways to help cast Kinjali Sunwing. I think that's a pretty good chance, at least by turn three, that I would have at least one of these nine sources, hopefully. If not, as always, Commune with Dinosaurs can increase the consistency or help dig for whatever's needed to maybe help cast Kinjali Sunwing. Sideboard is packing even more graveyard hate. Yes, is it Phoenix? That is, uh, it's a tough matchup sometimes. So Soul Guide Lantern, two of them. Exile, the opponent's graveyard. Clothis, just a single copy. Again, I may increase this to two copies. She's just fantastic, fantastic. Hopefully that's enough. I mean, Clothis, two Soul Guide, four Death Court Scavenger. Anger of the Gods to help sweep the arc like Phoenixes, potentially the Sprite Dragons uh, or other stuff before it's grown out of control. Certainly, Dragon's Rage Chandler is always a 3-3, so it is nice taking out that, plus the arc light Phoenixes dealing 3 damage to everything. And then, yes, this is something I haven't really used at all. I may have tried it once, once or twice in the past, but the Drakes, Sprite Dragon, crackling drake they cause headaches big time so i wanted something that could help take those things down wasn't completely an error i mean spending three and a green to give plus one plus one to something and deal damage that's pretty costly so at the very least if i do need it i could bring it in against a deck that isn't blue based will be nice taken out to fairy potentially with hunter's mark but those drakes i'm betting Hunter's Mark is going to help out quite nicely. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the first match. See if we uh, face that Is It Phoenix to start off with. Man, that uh, would be nice to highlight the potential of Kinjali Sunwing slowing down that stuff at least sometime tonight. I bet that's going to happen. Ooh, I like the looks of that. Hopefully Huntmaster survives. Hasty Kinjali Sunwing, nah, it's, it's not too bad. It's not super aggressive, but... Oh, well. Inquisition of Kozlek is going to do its thing. Painful stuff. If I am a little delayed replying to chat there, it's a little farther off to the side. My phone was almost dead, I noticed, just before I started here, so... Had to charge that, get it charging while I 
set up and that sort of thing, but it's still at about 50%. So I gotta leave it plugged in. Hmm. Well, hopefully, Huntmaster survives. Could have gone Lair of the Hydra, but uh, didn't want to give him any more information than I had to. Well, nothing to play this turn, so definitely drop in Lair of the Hydra. Hopefully, they don't have more Fatal Pushes, but where there's one, there's many. So they could use a Fatal Push, unfortunately, on Lair of the Hydra there. Maybe a little wary, casting it. Hmm. Yeah, stomping ground. At the very least, Regis or Alpha next turn. You can't fade a push or Regis or Alpha, but they got, uh, they haven't done a whole lot at the moment. Could get nasty here. Oh, well, Elder Gargaroth. So it's looking like uh, Jund mid-range, something like that. Ooh. Double Regis or Alpha, my goodness. I like the looks of that. Certainly, I'll hold things back if they want to swing with Elder Gargaroth. I would... Oh my gosh, that is not good. Oh! Elder Gargaroth, Regis or Alpha. Elder Gargaroth, Regis or Alpha. My goodness, this, this does not happen all that often. Alright, let's just uh, keep playing it. Good stuff. Hmm. Meat Hook Massacre is going to probably be our doom, I imagine. Ouch. That's painful. Huh. Well, I'll go with the next Regis or Alpha. Six, three, nah. We're not going to be busting through that anytime soon, that's for sure. But uh, two Elder Gargaroth, certainly that is going to do the trick. Hmm. Now the question is, Clothis would be nice getting something indestructible. But again, if the Meat Hook Massacre is big enough, being uh, minus X, minus X, it would get around indestructible if it did drop Clothis's toughness to zero. So that would be a pretty sad day. Hmm. Not a whole lot of graveyard stuff going on. Perhaps they got a little bit with the black of John, but I could probably keep things as is. Rampaging Frostodon, uh, they have some creatures. It could stop the life gain from Elder Gargaroth. Pings whenever they make a 3-3 beast, which is... Always quite nice. Kinjali Sunwing. Might be nice slowing them down. I think I'll switch Death Gorge with Rampaging. Yeah. Alright. Hopefully uh, Hannah, Helena, and Elena come down soon. Slap a bunch of 1-1 one -one counters on various creatures. Get them above and out of range of a big, nasty Meat Hook Massacre. But that was... Uh, that did the trick, certainly. Game one there. Ouch. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think I can work with that. Hmm. Rootbound Craig, just because I don't have a forest or a mountain, and certainly I want to maintain unclaimed territory, secluded courtyard to help cast and jolly Sunwing. And secluded courtyard again, especially to help give shifting ceratops haste, reach, trample, that sort of thing. Regis or Alpha would be nice. Wasn't too helpful, the previous game. Meat Hook Massacre for four. Ouch. So I'm thinking, get the land, yeah. I 
I think there's a pretty good chance they'll kill whatever we play. I feel like Rampaging Frostdawn would be nicer. Again, if they do play any creatures, it'll ping them. Maybe they have a Scavenging Ooze. That would be quite nice. Perhaps they're saving, setting up for Meat Hook Massacre eventually. Which they would need at least six to also take out Shifting Ceratops. Two black plus four for X. So they're still quite a ways away from that. They got a fair bit up though. What is their plan? Hmm. Chandra, oof, killing Shifting Ceratops. Well, I'm not letting her survive. I learned my lesson, uh, I forget when it was, but I, I learned my lesson. Take her out. That ultimate is nasty, nasty stuff. Would be nice to get a little bit more damage on him, but oh boy. I'll take a look at that emblem for anybody that doesn't know. Her ultimate minus seven, you get an emblem with. Whenever you cast a spell, this emblem deals five damage to any target. That's painful. That's painful. That will pretty much end the game right there, I would imagine. Uh, Samet Tyrant Smasher. Could be nice. Yeah, I'm thinking Samet Tyrant Smasher. Buff Shifting Ceratops. So that it would be able to trade with the Elder Gargroth. Elder Gargroth can't block rampaging, so it has to block shifting. So we get rid of the Elder Gargroth, which is nice. Ping him a little bit with rampaging Frostodon. That's good. That's good. Definitely have plenty of land, so feels pretty safe sending Sacred Foundry to the bottom. Hopefully it's another nice creature coming up. Get a slight bit more damage here. Could make all the difference. They can't get rid of rampaging. It could be pretty nasty for them. They can't play a whole lot more creatures. Rampaging's just going to ping. They can't swing only having one creature back. They have to have at least two to block potentially rampaging for Asadon, which could possibly pump and swing with a massive lair of the Hydra. Hmm. Ooh, this is looking interesting. Okay, so we got options. I'm thinking there may be a fatal push. So if I wanted to make a massive lair of the Hydra, they would unfortunately kill that. Hmm. Oh, Kinjali Sunwing. They can't kill it. That would be lethal right there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Samet, Tyrant Smasher, coming in strong with one of the fly guys. This is good. Wow. Well, I was hoping something like that would happen. Flying evasion. That seems to do the trick. I was hoping it would do the trick. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'm exploring that potential after this. Hmm. That's pretty good. I like it. Hopefully we don't have to worry about too many Elder Gargaros. But the opponent saw how well they did game one. They'll probably be prioritizing it. I assume there's the full play set of Elder Gargaros. That is, um, that's not a hand I'm liking to see. Perhaps could make it work. Oh, Blue Bear, how's it going? How's it going? Oh, hey, hey, no worries, no worries. You can always catch it from the beginning uh, after it's finished here. But yes, that was a that was a fantastic win, highlighting the importance of flying. Haste, buffing Kinjali Sunwing to just enough to kill him. I like it, but that, that, I don't like that hand. This one. This one is much better. 100%. Hmm. 
definitely it's going to be commune with dinosaurs. I may have potentially kept it if that source of green came into play untapped on turn one. Unfortunately, Rootbound Craig has to check if we control a mountain or a forest. So turn one, it's going to come into play tapped. Commune to the bottom. Ooh. Well, with Jund, you know, anything black, a uh, good chance they're going to be using Thoughtseize, that's for sure. Lair of the Hydra, pretty nice seeing that for turn two. Again, only a single copy of Lair of the Hydra and I'm seeing it fairly often. Hmm. Oh, uh... The camera is backwards here. Let me see if I can put it in the... That actually says a daddy Saurus. And it's also glow in the dark. I can't really show that at the moment. But uh, yeah, it's themed around Jurassic Park. But yes, daddy Saurus. All right. Let's see. Hmm. Hopefully they don't kill Rampaging Frostodon. Perhaps could have cut these scavenger grounds here. It is nice having a little bit extra graveyard hate. Extra lands if I don't really need the graveyard hate, but yeah. You and I are take out. Oh, hey, you never know. You never know. Chandra. I don't like Chandra. Again. Hmm. Yeah, definitely can jallies get rid of her. Yeah, Otepe Hunt Master to take her out. I don't need what else do I have? I have another shirt. Uh, Dad by day, gamer by night, I believe it is. But yeah, I love that it's glow in the dark. It's pretty cool. Ooh, three, that's, uh, well, Meat Hook Massacre is to be expected, as always. Figured I might see it game two there, but, uh, yeah. That's rough. Hopefully something hasty, Regis or Alpha next turn would be fantastic. I do actually, or in the past, I did wear this Daddy Source shirt to work. Hmm. Well, this is why Lair of the Hydra is pretty darn fantastic. Not going to make the mistake with math. It's got to be one green. And you can't tap layer, so we can only make it a three. I was about to make it four, but then layer of the Hydra would have been tapped and we wouldn't have got any damage on them. Luckily, they didn't have any untapped sources of black, or I expect they may have done a fatal push on layer of the Hydra there. Ooh, Lothus. Yeah, let's see. Well, hopefully Commune grabs something pretty nice. Hmm. Chandra is five, so I could see her trying to kill, probably killing one of these guys. So I think might be safe just going Ripjaw Raptor. Maybe doubling up on removal for Ripja. Chandra dealing four plus two or one from something else. Oh, today's my lucky day. Eldegar Roth, that is uh Oh, they didn't want to play it. Interesting. Huh. Chavil. He is nasty. Oh, Samet Tyrant Smasher, okay. Oh, let's see. Swing with a big glare. Yeah. 5-5 five, five, glare of the Hydra. I like the looks of that. Yes. And hope they don't have a fatal push. Oh boy, I'm crossing my fingers here. Phew. Okay, okay. Assassin's Trophy is... Uh, does the trick, luckily. Um, like I mentioned at the start of tonight, always having at least a few basics. In the past, I have gone three forests and one mountain. Um, usually three, three or four basics. But I've been favoring the utility lands, scavenger grounds, 
blast zone, that sort of thing. So I have dropped the basics a little bit, but still, I wouldn't probably ever cut them completely. Hmm. Bone crusher, that could You're do the trick. Down. And, oh, I jinxed myself saying, hopefully, there wasn't another Chaville, and uh, there was. So, Sam it. You're done. Don't need more lands. Oh, they're gonna get minus seven. So, gotta pressure it as much as possible. Bone Crusher. I don't know, it might be it. No, that's all right. Um, sometimes there's delays and things. Messages just get hung up, that sort of thing. Hmm, that might be it. Hopefully they don't take out Samet, Tyrant Smasher, and there's something nice coming up. We're done here. Could be it, though, depending what they play. There's one spell. All it takes is... One more? Oh, they wanted to kill Samet. Interesting. Probably going to be it, though, unfortunately, with them getting the emblem there from Chandra. Banner Guardian. Well, uh, Otepic Huntmaster is not going to do it. So definitely, I would expect them to play at least two spells next turn, which would finish us off, unfortunately. Took a nice game from them with Samet, Tyrant Smasher, but they had some absolutely fantastic removal. Lovely answers for some of the stuff, the early stuff. That can get pretty painful when they slow things down. So again, like I mentioned, only having four Marauding Raptors and four Otepic Huntmasters uh, could be a little iffy. With the likely chance, um, like we saw there, that they interrupt things. Uh, yes, yes, that was a... I think it's a traditional Jund mid-range, Jund control deck... Um, Various planeswalkers, somewhat costly planeswalkers, lots of removal, thought seize. So it's just, um, yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, meat. I think Meat Hook is absolutely fantastic. So I can see why they would want to use it. De definitely, this hand looks fantastic. But uh, yeah, just uh, general Jund good stuff. Jam all the best things in those three colors, red green and black and it does the trick certainly did the trick there that previous match painful but oh it's looking like it might be the is it phoenix matchup i was hoping for cross the fingers of course that Huntmaster survives at least a turn would be nice going marauding raptor next turn for one followed by death court scavenger Ooh, man. was not meant to be, unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> Would have been nice if Lair of the Hydra did come into play untapped. Could have gone Huntmaster plus Marauding Raptor, but uh, I'll still go Huntmaster. Cross the fingers. They may not have something else that deals two damage. I think there's a pretty high chance of that, unfortunately. If they don't have it, Opt right here may have grabbed that. But if Huntmaster survives, we're looking good. Oh, oh, this is uh, pretty exciting. Uh, yes, Blue Bear, I added um, quite a few fantastic things to go against the Graveyard Chickens. Just especially... I'm starting off with Death Court Scavenger. 
because I expected. Is it Phoenix or various? Is it decks like I'm facing right now? Scavenger Grounds, a land desert, tap to add a colorless, or pay two and tap it, sacrifice it, and exile all graveyards. Plus, there's Clothus to exile specific cards from the graveyard, similar to Death Gorge Scavenger. And two Soul Guide Lanterns to also exile things. So yes, it's a lot of exiling things from the graveyard. It's going to be, hopefully, a good matchup right here, right now. Uh, yeah, gonna pressure them with Marauding Raptor. Would have been nice if they were a little bit more open. Swinging with Death Gorge. Would have been able to swing with him as a uh, 5 power, unfortunately, but do want to maintain him. If I do need to swing with him uh, following turns. So yeah, there's uh, so two Soul Guide Lantern, one Clothus, two Scavenger Grounds, that's uh, 5, plus 4 Death Gorge. So there's 9 ways to interact deal with graveyard things looks like uh, we're seeing the arc light phoenix though unfortunately could be rough oh oh another one ouch oh three of them well oh, soul guide lantern would be uh, very good right about now huh? they didn't get the phoenixes back oh yes please Nah, pay with it with that, yes, okay. Can Jelly Sunwing? Would have been nice being able to play it, definitely. Hmm. Yeah, slowing them down next turn if they didn't remove Can Jelly Sunwing. Creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped in. Going back to your question, Blue Bear, Can Jelly Sunwing hopefully is... Oh, I didn't mean to click that. Oops. I was just clicking it to show you guys, but uh, now I have a Kinjali Sunwing. I was hoping for that land there. Huh. Well, well, well. Get rid of one Phoenix? May not do a whole lot. They only have one land, which would bring down Dragon's Rage Chandler. Quite nice. Shifting Ceratops can't block flying stuff anyways, so... Swing away. It's go time. Yeah. One Delver makes me feel a little more comfortable. Still, might be it. Crossing my fingers they don't get a land into the graveyard. And we take even more damage from Dragon's Rage Chandler here. I have, uh, way back when, or quite a while ago, I saw them use Delver of Secrets, but for probably the past month or quite some time, it seems people have moved away from Delver of Secrets here. And Blue Bear, you may not have caught, uh, my phone is kind of more off to the side charging at the moment so i may miss messages a little longer than previous nights i think it's basically well probably preference depending if somebody wants to use delver of secrets or not certainly it does the trick uh, one blue for a three two flyer that's going to be a headache flying in general can be a headache Okay, more creatures. It looks looking good. Just a lot of creatures. They're dead. Oh, oh, we got them. Death Gorge. Or maybe just Regis or Alpha. Hmm, yeah. I don't know. Let's think about this. Everything is one. Death Gorge to exile... Two phoenixes actually would be quite nice now that I think about it. Yeah. Gaining a bunch of life. I like it.
get rid of the faceless looting so don't have to worry about that at the very least hey hey no worries happy you're here as always um always lovely to talk to you and everyone else as well it's a good time hopefully all right let's get rid of these phoenixes I think that's probably got to do it. They got to block with a fair bit of things. Nah, you can't block that. Dead. Bam. Good stuff. Yeah, no, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't say you say a lot. No, it's, uh, you always got good questions, good insight. Keeps things flowing. Definitely, I do appreciate that. But, huh, graveyard stuff, let's go. Go big, go home. Anger of the Gods, that's our favorite. And seeing how they leaned quite heavily, especially seeing Delver of Secrets and, of course, the fantastic Dragon's Rage Chandler. Didn't see any Sprite Dragons, so maybe this opponent is favoring Delver of Secrets and Dragon's Rage. So I think definitely Anger of the Gods, the lovely sweeper, that's going to be extra good coming up here. I'll leave Hunter's Mark out. Uh, I forgot to mention this to you, Blue Bear. But for the Sprite Dragons, Crackling Drake, the really big blue-colored flying things, my hope is Hunter's Mark is going to do the trick. One green if it targets a blue permanent. I don't control. Can't be countered. Pretty fantastic there. But one of my creatures gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Then it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker, which could be pretty nice, pretty nice, potentially taken out to fairy. But I think the main goal for this is definitely taking out one of those big crackling drakes, spray dragon, um, the really big flying things. Oh. oh, yes. Two birds. That was fantastic. That's Gorge Scavenger. Certainly gobbled up those things, but uh, time's running out, so i gotta got to cut a couple things. A couple things here. I think just Hunt Master and... Hmm. Hasty's nice. Can be nice. One more thing. One Scavenger Grounds. Okay. Oof, I almost ran down the clock there, my goodness. Yes, definitely uh, my plan tonight certainly was to really bring the pain to Is It Phoenix and other graveyard-based things, but Is It Phoenix is, is good, definitely. So it's, uh, it's working out. Yes, that... Um, Hunter's Mark from uh, the D&D &D set. I think it's going to be good. Again, potentially hitting creatures or planeswalkers. Still fairly versatile. Yeah, I think I'll keep that. And if you don't target a... If your target isn't blue, pretty costly. Again, paying three and a green. Four for some removal, but at least you don't have to target something blue. That would be probably too narrow a use for me to use I wouldn't feel very comfortable in that case so if you're targeting you know something nasty that's red black whatnot ooh, okay exciting stuff anger of the gods the sweeper to help deal with the creatures hopefully crossing the fingers get a second source of red but it was nice so far taking them down yes yes I do have Samet in this build. It's good. Lots of good stuff going around. But, oh, oh, this um, heart of the cards here. Getting the second source of red. Just a third land. That was going to be pretty awkward, I imagine. Hopefully, Marauding Raptor survives. Luckily, they don't have a Phoenix in the graveyard yet. So, I could see next turn, Death Gorge Scavenger. Exiling that Faithless Looting. Ooh, okay. But yeah, Samet, um, 
I'm definitely going to explore Samet the Tested. Maybe other versions of Samet, but yeah. Plus two, plus one. Scry one to help get further to something quite nice. I like it. Big time. Hmm. Oh. I'm just going to go cloth this. Huh. Hope they don't counter it. Crossing the fingers, they don't counter it. Or bounce it, hopefully. Hmm. Maybe they feel quite safe playing um, Delver of Secrets, Dragon's Rage Chandler, all those little flying things. They don't know yet that we have the possibility of Anger of the Gods. So we use that uh, knowledge to our advantage. I should probably read Clothus. I don't use her very often at all, so if it was a land, add mana. Otherwise, gain two life, deal two damage to opponent. Do I want to add mana? Go to four, plus a land would get me to five. Yes, I could go Marauding Raptor plus Shifting Ceratops this turn. Yeah, I'm going to exile a land. Oh, definitely, definitely. I'm always open to suggestions. I mean, it certainly opens up possibilities that I may not have even considered, but yeah, I was happy to help show off things. Uh, maybe... It's something you guys are wanting to see. You don't quite want to bite the bullet. Use it. So I'll test it out for you. And sometimes it just works so fantastically I use it on the regular. Hmm, yeah, Death Gorge. I could see him going Faithless Looting coming up next turn. So removing that possibility, that would be nice. Perhaps that's the only Faithless looting they have. So if that's the case, it may have gotten them to get some Arclight Phoenixes into the graveyard. I was a little worried there. They may kill Death Gorge Scavenger after it gets pinged um, or while its trigger was on the stack and it was temporarily or before it got buffed it was still sitting at two toughness oftentimes well speaking of pillar of flame so they don't have more than one thing i imagine that deals two damage because i would have expected them to use pillar of flame previous turn but uh yeah exile the land 100 percent just keep going more good stuff. Take the ping. Mara ding. Take the ding, I guess you could say. But, auto tapper. Okay, okay, it's not screwing us up there. Last night, the auto tapper did screw things up. A similar scenario, it tapped, uh, say, Rockfall Vale here, unclaimed territory, and stomping ground, leaving me with just scavenger grounds, where I was hoping to have that extra mana available to give Shifting Ceratops haste, but Scavenger Grounds, uh, I think it was Blast Zone, potentially, doesn't tap for green, so this is definitely what I want to be doing. Hasty, Shifting, it's a good time. Hopefully we get to make Clothis a creature, but at the very least, you know, she's putting in some good work, continually exiling things. Sh Shifting Ceratops does survive Anger of the Gods whenever I do choose to go that. So hopefully they play some more small creatures, perhaps, coming up here. Hmm. Exile some more stuff. Good. I'm thinking maybe getting rid of the Crackling Drake, reducing the overall different types of cards they have, keeping them to just uh, two types instance and sorceries uh they could i could see him getting yeah could see him getting uh, unholy heat 
things like that uh, wouldn't be good. Yeah, definitely commune for the turn. Grab a land or something else quite nice. Ooh, Galta. Uh, yeah, I'm going to grab the queen. I think that might help close things out. That's going to be nice. But we could also just simply be dead next turn. We are at 11. That's pretty rough. And uh, Blue Bear, speaking of Samet the Tested, giving things haste, it is lovely, and Samet's ability buffing a creature plus two would reduce Galta's cost, hopefully down to two, but yeah, buffing overall power. Uh, not a full Naya build, just uh, splashing for Kinjali Sunwing, again to hopefully slow down aggressive decks and things like that seems to somewhat be doing the trick but yeah at the moment it's just for Kinjali Sunwing hmm. I think that should probably do the trick oh the queen let's go Good time. Clothus. Anger. Done. Ouch. Oh, okay. Man, that was... That's a thing of beauty. Is it Phoenix in two? I redeemed myself from the match I played just before I started the stream here. I mentioned uh, I was facing the nasty crackling drakes, uh, things like that, which... There's the crackling drake. But also the other Storm's Entity, I believe it is, Sprite Dragon, the nasty things that can be quite big, cause a headache. If they use Unholy Heat on Shifting Ceratops, sometimes it's uh, it's very painful when this is the only thing that can potentially block the big, the big flyers like Crackling Drake here. So it's nice having, again, something else flying to hopefully stop taking some nasty damage. But got it done. Is it Phoenix in two? Hasn't happened uh, too often with dinos. Certainly they're nasty, but that's hardcore, dedicated, exiling, Clothis coming in strong. So definitely I could see the argument for adding two copies of Clothis. Maybe even three, but uh, yeah. That was good. I love it. And dinos especially... They have a lot of creatures, Ripjaw Raptor, Shifting Ceratops, requiring two green to cast, so it really helps get up to the seven devotion that you need for Clothis quite easily. Oh, hey, Blue Bear. Speaking of, there it is, Samet, the Tyrant Smasher. And I think that could be pretty, pretty good hand to start. That's rough, though. Knight of the Ebon Legion. Yes, mono black vampires. Historically, this has been a fairly rough matchup for me. We got lots of death touch, lots of fantastic removal, lots of really, really cheap creatures. Gets out of control fast. Hopefully, Anger of the Gods coming in game two going to do the trick I think definitely they're going to pay the three if Marauding Raptor blocked Knight of the Ebon Legion they may pay three anyways so might as well preserve Marauding Raptor if I did block Knight of the Ebon Legion uh, I would have saved taking four damage there oh yes definitely the additional flyers to help block Certainly. Oh, 100%. You can see exactly how it would help against Arclight Phoenixes if they get multiples. Yeah, it's going to be painful. Ender, do I ever think they'll revisit Ixalan? Um, 
I think from what I've read, uh, Mark Rosewater and various other people, it's a little lower down on the planes that they're going to revisit. I think I heard him say there's not a whole lot of reason to go back, I believe. Most of the storylines were solved in the Ixalan setting, so... I mean, I would, of course, love to go back to any plane that gives more dinos. That'd be pretty fantastic. Maybe we would get a five-color Zakama Super Primal Calamity. I don't know about that, but anything, anything with more dinos is something I'd be up for. Hopefully we can take out somebody here. Definitely going to double block. Potentially. So Knight of the Ebon Legion would go to a 6-7. So got to block at least 7. Hopefully to take things out. Does gain Death Touch, so unfortunately going to lose Regisaur and the token. But we take out Knight of the Ebon Legion, so that feels pretty good. Yes, yes, definitely. Hey, I'm always happy to talk about the potential of more dinos if we revisit Ixalan, that sort of thing. Yes, I think with the fact that there is at least one dinosaur, even though it's a plant dinosaur, but one dinosaur coming out, I think there's probably going to be more than one. I mean, who doesn't love dinosaurs? It may not be a very popular tribe, but... I think there's a good potential we see at least two, three. I could see them being sort of as exotic pets in the streets of New Capenna, you know, crime families. Yeah, you know, dinosaur seems like a pretty cool exotic pet, uh, but certainly Ripjaw trade with this gifted Ether Born again. You know, drawing another card, pretty fantastic. Uh, it's painful though. Gonna need Rampaging Ferocidon, big time, especially if they get another veto, but things could be done, done for right here. They're at 24. Hmm. Yeah, can Jallies make any vampires they play come into play tabbed? That's gonna be quite nice. Actually, uh, you know what, I'm gonna go Sam at the Tyrant Smasher. Don't need more lands. Yeah, if I can go double Rip Jar Raptor next turn, Sam at the Tyrant Smasher, giving them both haste, that's going to be pretty fantastic. Yes, please. Uh, Blue Bear, uh, no Tameo safekeeping. I wanted to go back to commune with dinosaurs to help increase consistency. There is a ton of dinos so I felt also for that fact commune with dinosaurs would be quite nice but perhaps I should go back to Tamiyo's either way I think it's somewhat on preference oh yes that uh ouch well Sanctum Seeker is going to do it so 100% uh, rampaging for Ocidon after seeing the awesome Life gain shenanigans with Veto, Thorn of the Death Grows, Sanctum Seeker. Also, that can be painful if they get a, get a lot of vampires. Yes. Could have been nasty for him, swinging with both Ripjaw Raptors. That would have been lovely. Would have been a lot of damage, potentially lethal, if we hadn't died there. But uh, they got it done. Big time. Death Gorge. Seems like a pretty reasonable thing. They don't have... They have some graveyard strategies going on, vampires, but the life gain thing, they really, they go on that. So if we can slow that down, that's going to be pretty good. Anger of the Gods, though, could potentially be good if I get it early enough, if some of the vampires haven't grown too out of control. Certainly, Knight of the Ebon Legion, big time, as long as that hasn't grown past three. 100% Anger of the Gods, that's going to do the trick. Man, I do love Samet. My goodness. 
she's just showed up actually quite a few times tonight so i'm i'm just super pleased that's probably the card i'm most pleased at with tonight in quite some time actually so yeah thanks for the suggestion blue bear but uh i gotta cut a little bit more here shifting ceratops mm, yeah I do like Kanjali Sunwing, the potential of having multiple vampires come into play tapped. Hopefully slow them down enough. Keep them open enough. Again. That's also the potential benefit from something like Kanjali Sunwing. They want to play a bunch of creatures, they come into play tapped. Comes back around to our turn and they're fairly open. Maybe open enough for a lethal swing. That would be fantastic, but this hand... I do like the looks of that. Again, hopefully, I would say we get to that second source of red. Uh, but looks like they'll probably get rid of Huntmaster there. I think it's probably Huntmaster. Uh. So they probably have... That does make sense, actually. They have some cheap removal for Huntmaster only. Oh... Maybe they don't. Interesting. Ooh. Okay. Man, I expected Huntmaster to uh, die. But he did not. Well, this is very good. Oh. Uh, I think still going to two copies of Lair of the Hydra. I mean... I only have one copy actually redeemed at the moment, so that's the main reason holding me back from putting two copies of Lair at the Hydra. But I could see, yeah, I could see two copies of Lair, two copies of Samet, the tested. Yeah, bam. Ho! Oh, doesn't get much cleaner than that. Dinos, big, painful stuff. Uh. You know what? I'm going to trim Galta. Being on the draw, perhaps, you know, that's a little bit slow, a little bit too slow, so something to help block something a little bit cheaper, like Death Gorge. Hopefully that's going to do the trick. It is a sad day, as always, cutting the queen. Any copies, but, um, yeah. Definitely, I think after the stream tonight, I'll see how two copies of Sam at the Tested feel. But I love it. Love it so far. All fantastic stuff. Uh, yeah, definitely. Hopefully, Huntmaster survives like he did the previous game. I mean, that just really accelerated things. They're going to discard something, though. Inquisition, as always. Again, that is a pretty nice thing, having the three amigos, Drover the Mighty as well, just to really make sure there's... Or there's a better chance of playing something on turn two. Easily could have had just Otepic Huntmaster or just Marauding Raptor there. Still would have looked like a pretty fantastic hand, but if it was our only two drop, definitely Inquisition. That would have been uh, painful with them discarding the only two drops. So hopefully they don't have another one. I expect there's multiple Inquisitions, multiple Thought Seizes, unfortunately. They may be holding up a uh, fatal push. Yes. Ah. It's one less fatal push that's going to take out uh, Kanjali Sunwing, Death Gorge Scavenger, stuff like that. Uh, it's not a total loss, at the very least. Ooh. That's all right. Do have enough lands. This is good. Shelter Thicket. Fantastic. I do. I think I only have one copy in the list, so don't have anything to play along with Death Gorge. Certainly pretty reasonable to go Sheltered Thicket as our land for the turn. Can't swing with Death Gorge, so definitely makes sense to exile a creature, gain a little bit of life, and uh, hope it survives at least one round. Nah. Right. Oh, oh my goodness. Yep, I think we got him here. Definitely Marauding Raptor. Set up 
a pretty fantastic turn. Hmm. Noxus Grasp, yeah. Hopefully they don't kill Marauder Raptor. Alright. They do gain a bunch of life, but keeping Marauding Raptor back... Oh, more Regisaur Alpha. I like the looks of that. Okay. Big damage coming out here. Bam. They're done. Exiling. Hey. We have lots of removal, lots of discard. That's a lot of non-creature stuff for something like Death Garge to eat. Death Garge? Don't know where that came from. Death Gorge. A lot for that to eat, so... He stays fueled up quite nice, especially when it comes down for two, but... There's the potential of Death Gorge to be reduced to one green, of course, with Otepec Huntmaster and Marauding Raptor, which is... One green for this guy, that is fantastic. I don't think they can do a whole lot. Definitely, I think this second Regis or Alpha is going to lock things up quite nicely. Feels like it will. Oh. There we go. Oh. Mono Black Vampires, that is... Yeah. As I mentioned, starting off this match here, traditionally it's pretty rough. Gifted Aetherborn having Death Touch, Lifelink as well, but mainly Death Touch. Knight of the Ebon Legion growing pretty big. Tapping to get bigger and get Death Touch is nasty, nasty stuff. Being able to trade and kill whatever we want to block with, or maybe they just play a little safer and hold these creatures back to potentially deter some aggression, swinging with something big that you know, may not have trample. So pretty fantastic chum blocking. One of our big things. And then of course the discard stuff, the killing, but we got it done. They stumbled a little bit in the land department there, which uh, happens to everybody. Happens to me certainly, uh, not every night, but uh, we've seen it happen. Painful stuff. What time are we at here? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll risk one more match. So far, I haven't heard a peep from my daughter quite yet, so hopefully she's sleeping pretty good. Hopefully she sleeps maybe the best yet tonight in her big girl bed. Calgary MTG Plane Walker. Huh. Interesting. Calgary, a city in Canada here. Oh, yes. Mmm, delicious. Certainly. But, uh, would like to see a two drop for this particular hand. I mean, that's why you want to have multiple copies of Regis or Alpha going back to that. The first one gives the second one haste. Everyone's just swinging. It's a lot of creatures, it's a lot of damage. Uh, I'll, I'll keep that. I'll risk it. At the very least, there is Kinjali Sunwing. I could see there being a pretty good chance to get to a fourth land at least by turn four. Go Helena and Elena. Ooh, there we go. Good stuff. Ah, Rockfall Veil. Vale. Maybe this person is streaming as well. I haven't ever heard or seen that name, but Calgary MTG Plane Walker. Seems a little suspicious. Yeah, since it's looking like Gruel, certainly seems like Kinjali Sunwing slowing things down. I would expect him to play some more creatures here, or maybe just kill Kinjali Sunwing, unfortunately. Hopefully that's not the case. Scavenging Ooze tapped. Good. Hmm. 
they haven't removed anything. Uh, they only have a few small creatures, so I think setting up with marauding would be nice. Ripjaw, though, always pretty fantastic to deter aggression from decks like this. Yeah, Kajali Sun will start chipping away. Certainly, Ripjaw, that's going to be a big headache. Oh, yes. Okay, well, good stuff. Definitely Marauding Raptor this turn, followed by Helena and Elena. Hopefully they don't have a stomp that's going to kill Helena. That would be rough. I think that might be the case, though. Since that's the case, we'll see... See if they have a stomp. May use it to kill Shifting Ceratops here after Marauding Raptor pings it. Oh, so they had, it was Collected Company. So it would have been nice going Helena and Elena. Definitely. I certainly expect there's Bone Crusher Giant in here to some degree. Probably a whole place that I would imagine. Yeah, Rip Jar Raptor. Fantastic. Again, against a deck like this. Drawing cards. That's what you want to be doing. More stuff. Yes. More creatures. Bigger creatures. Uh, what do I want? Yeah, buff and marauding raptor, definitely. Uh, feel pretty safe attacking with, well, let's see. Marauding, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Go big or go home, as they say. Hmm. Certainly, if they can't deal with the Ripjaw there, that is just going to absolutely crush their aggression, being able to trade with Gruul Spellbreaker, Zertog Goblin, so they may double up on potentially a stomp on Ripjar after there, but well, certainly Regis or Alpha, big time. Maybe Commune gets uh, Galta, potentially? Uh, I was thinking Maybe something like that, but uh, it looks like more of a traditional gruel deck, gruel aggro, you could say. A lot of cheap creatures coming out here. Uh, yeah, the trampler guy. Yeah, I, th I would say this uh, is gruel aggro. Zertog goblins, scavenging ooze, gruel spellbreaker, stuff that costs three. Uh, Actually, I should go back. We did see Collected Company, so you could call it Gruel Coco, short for Collected Company. Definitely, yeah, that's what I would call it. Hey, more lands, good stuff. I gotta do... Well, I can't be too aggressive, especially seeing all the stuff we have in hand here. The Regisaur Alpha, Helena. At the very least, there is Regisaur to potentially just block the Zertog Goblin, so I feel pretty safe at the moment sitting at 17. Again, I mean, you're seeing it right here. Kinjali Sunwing, anything they play is effectively useless the turn coming up can't block with it, so another Regisaur is... that's gonna do it, I think. They may have four up. Maybe go in a collected company, I... yes. Oh! Got it done. Wow. Whew. Okay, it's always nice 
taking a game from something like Gruel Agro, Gruel Collected Company, and not having to reveal the potential of something devastating like Anger of the Gods, 100%, that's coming in. It will be nice, potentially taking out Scavenging Ooze before it grows past 3 toughness. Certainly Zertog Goblin, often time sitting at 3. Pelt Collector could be sitting at 3 for quite some time. They may have Gruel Spellbreaker come down with haste, not put that 1-1 one, one counter on, so Anger of the Gods again for this creature could take it out, so yeah. Certainly, at least for this variation of Gruel, a lot of small stuff. Anger of the Gods seems to be the way to go. Hmm. Let's see, though. Clothus? Um, nah. Well, keep it as is. Aim to hopefully get that turn three Ripjaw Raptor. Would be fantastic. I imagine they have Stomp, one in a red, deal two damage to any target. That's with uh, Bone Crusher Giant. I assume it's in here. I'm just happy I didn't see it. But this is a hand that certainly could work out. Two lands, oftentimes, is pretty rough, but Lair of the Hydra here. Turn one, commune with dinosaurs, big time. Yes, blue bear, I did bring in anger of the gods. It's uh, crossing the fingers. That's going to be pretty fantastic. Sometimes nasty stuff can happen with burning tree emissary, but uh, stomping ground. Hopefully hunt master survives. Next turn, rotting for one, rip jaw for two green, but they could be killing stuff. Ouch. Hmm. Well, at the very least, got marauding. Hopefully they don't... Excuse me. Hopefully they don't have another Domri's ambush. Okay. Ooh. Wow. If we don't draw land next turn, that is... Absolutely going to do it. Actually, that will do it. Huh. Well, you saw the potential, nasty potential from Gruel Agro. Certainly, Domri's Ambush. Put a 1 1 counter on target creature so that buff lasts. Pretty fantastic, but deal damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. That's pretty fantastic. And. With this removal not being fight, you don't have to worry about if your creature is potentially going to die. If it has been pinged by a marauding raptor and it's sitting at uh, temporarily reduced toughness, Domri's ambush, just straight dealing damage, not fighting, is a potentially pretty fantastic option. But I'll just uh, aim to go as fast as possible. Hopefully have a repeat of game one there. Get some Ripjaw Raptors. Deter that aggression. 100%. Ripjaw is a headache for this deck. Ooh, not quite going to do it. That's also rough. Oh, that is... Well, I don't want to mulligan anymore. But that is uh, sometimes how it goes. Hopefully a 2-drop or a 3-drop at the very least. Uh, but... Hmm. Oof, the Pelt Collector. That's going to be problematic, potentially, if they go Burning Tree Emissary here. Then Burning Tree into a Zertob Goblin. They'll do Riot. Make it three, so Pelt Collector goes to three, yes. Ouch. Anger of the Gods, where are you at? Hmm. Well, Ripjaw Raptor. It's going to be a lot of damage this turn, so it may not be fast enough with Ripjaw here. And an Embercleave is going to do it. Yep, that is uh, the lovely potential. Nasty, nasty potential of um, very aggressive start from Gruel Agro there. Pelt Collector, turn one. Burning Tree for free, followed by the third creature. 
on turn two with Zertog Goblin. And then just a pretty simple, fantastic turn three Embercleave to lock things up. And there's no getting around that, definitely. But that's how it goes sometimes with a super, pretty amazing, aggressive deck like Gruel Aggro, Embercleave. Always finishing, finishing things off quite nicely. But I am pretty happy that my daughter's been sleeping quite well so far. Haven't heard a peep yet tonight, so crossing my fingers, I will leave it there for now. I think I may come back with a list somewhat similar to this, uh, maybe adding some more Samet Tyrant Smasher for tomorrow night. Maybe something different, but as always, something dino related. So Blue Bear, uh, Ender, everyone else. Thanks for watching. Remember, there is always room for improvement. Pretty good tonight. You saw the potential, slowing things down. Jelly Sunwing, making stuff, coming to play tapped. That uh, seems to be where it's at. And again, taking down Is It Phoenix, oh, that's always going to be a highlight if that happens any night, really. Lovely stuff. Getting up there. It's going to be nice. Aiming for at least 50 packs from Streets of New Capenna. Might spend some money, open 100 packs. That'd be nice. Yes. Hey, hey, appreciate you watching as well and everyone else. Hopefully some more exciting stuff tomorrow night taken down. Is it Phoenix again? Maybe it is so common, but uh, yes. See all you guys later watching right now or later on. Have a good one. Yes, definitely, definitely. I'm going to be a big pack opening, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'll leave it there. Keep an eye out for that.